At ChangeTip, we're always looking at new ways to make it easier to purchase Bitcoin. Most of our users got their first taste of Bitcoin as a tip sent to them on one of our 10 social media channels that we support. We enable direct ACH transfers from your bank account right to your ChangeTip wallet. And we support top-up options from all the other top Bitcoin wallets in the space. Still, we wanted to go further. Well, we've been working on a secret project at ChangeTip and we're ready to announce it today. It's called ChangeTip Scan. ChangeTip Scan is an interplay of hardware and software, developed together to create a more efficient way to convert paper money into digital currency. The iPhone case and app come together to create ChangeTip Scan. Upon launching the app, it's synced with the ChangeTip website, where your latest transactions are downloaded to ensure that your balance is up to date. To convert bills to bits, simply feed any denomination of US currency through the slot on the back. As it feeds through ChangeTip Scan, the serial number is recorded and registered while the bill itself is decirculated. Immediately, the value of the note is converted to Bitcoin and is reflected in your balance. It's just that easy. There's something so visceral about watching bills turn into bits right in the palm of your hand. We're now accepting pre-orders at changetip.com scan and we plan on shipping in the next two weeks. So reserve yours today. Welcome to another episode of Decentral Talk Live, the show where we discuss Bitcoin, blockchain, technology, and all things decentralized. In this studio, it's me, Anthony. And Ethan. And today we're joined by Nick Sullivan, CEO of ChangeTip. Nick, thanks for joining us. Hello, everybody. So Nick, uh, ChangeTip's you know, getting a lot of press, a lot of publicity over the last little while. Can you give our audience, perhaps those that, that haven't heard of ChangeTip or haven't used it yet, what is ChangeTip um, and you know, why is it getting this attention? Yeah, so we're really excited to have a good and new interesting use case for Bitcoin. Uh, we think micropayments is uh, in the category of zero to one to use Peter Thiel's new book. He, 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 puts, category, he puts businesses into either zero to one or, or one to N. Um, and I think, say, cross-border remittances is a great example of taking of how Bitcoin can take an existing service or provider and make it something that's much more efficient by tapping into Bitcoin. Um, micropayments, I think, is an interesting example of something that we're actually going to see new human behaviors invented based on payment channels that didn't exist before. As we reduce the friction around payments low enough, uh, we're going to start to see all kinds of new interesting use cases for Bitcoin and micropayments. Um, one of the reasons why I think ChangeTip in particular is getting a lot of attention is because there's an inherent mechanism for viral growth baked into the very way that the product works. So the tipping begets tipping, and uh, we, we see uh, a lot of people come in, collect the tip, um, a certain percentage of those go on to deposit money, add more money to the system, and then a certain smaller percentage of those go on to become our power tippers, and then that creates this beautiful flywheel uh, uh, where we're helping drive the mass consumer adoption of Bitcoin. Cool. How, how do you sum up ChangeTip in, in one sentence? What is ChangeTip? Well, we call it a love button for the internet. So when you see content that you like, there's a fairly well-established like economy online. Uh, this is for content that you love. And according to your site, you've got uh, 66,481 tippers so far, and collectively they've sent about $93,000 US. Is that correct? No, we need to go ahead and fix the amount, um, and we got some criticism on this because I quoted an amount in the New York Times, and then it's much higher than what's on the homepage. Um, what's happening is is that we're internally accounting everything based on satoshis. So as the price of Bitcoin has gone down, that number is translated as today's value. So the the actual number of dollar amount tips is actually significantly higher. We need to record the US dollar amount on the day that the tip was sent and then report based on that, but now we'd have to go back. So so it's not an entirely accurate figure because the price of Bitcoin uh, right now uh, shows that it's lower than it is. I think the real number is 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 nearly 300,000. Mm -hmm. Another one of those tricky things that Bitcoin makes you do is, is all yeah. the different accounting things you gotta do with the prices going up and down. Um, well, Hey, let, let's talk a little bit about yourself. Is this the first project that you've worked in Bitcoin, and how did you get into Bitcoin? Yeah, so it's actually kind of a funny story. Um, I started messing. I started looking around at Bitcoin 
Well, the first time I heard about it was in 2011, and I had a friend that tried to drag me into it. Uh, and quite honestly, I, I spent half a day trying to figure out how to buy Bitcoin and then gave up. I said, this is too much work. I need to go back and spend time with my family. I, I wish I would have had a little more, uh, a, a, a little bit more of a passion for it back then, or definitely to be in a position, better position today. Uh, but it wasn't until August of 2013 that I started really paying attention again. Um, uh, I started hanging out on Reddit slash R slash Bitcoin every day. Read the Satoshi Nakamoto white paper. That's when all the light bulbs went off for me on how transformative this technology was going to be and how m m the other thing that I saw was we were in the infrastructure stage and what we needed was people that were going to come along and make it easy for the average person to use. So I think that's a spot right now that change tip is filling. Um, lots of people tell us that they love change tip because it's the easiest on-ramp to Bitcoin. When you uh, started that, when, you, when the company launched, I guess, in December 2013, during, just before that, though, in November, was, of course, the Do Dogecoin popularity, and that led to like, a massive rise in the idea of online tipping. Is that what sparked you to create Change Tip for the Bitcoin side, or was there a predecessor um, that came before oh, the Dogecoin? Timing-wise, um, there was actually the Bitcoin tip bot uh, written by a guy named Nerdfighter Sean. Um, Nerdfighter Sean, by the way, was great in the transition um, and really helped us out. Loved what we were doing. When I first showed him what we had written, uh, we were super excited. I was, well, it was, it was, it was a bit worrisome because I felt like, oh, maybe he's going to be upset with me for writing something better. But no, he had the exact opposite uh, reaction, which was, uh, well, no, this was change ship is what chipping should be. And you've done a much better job, so let's just move all the users from Bitcoin Tipbot to the to to, to chain ship. That that actually, um, I wanted to have a, an approach that gave people a little bit more of a choice. Um, but I think he was pretty emphatic about shutting the Bitcoin Tipbot down, so that was why there was somewhat of an aggressive switch for people. Um, that was his choice, not mine. Um, in the middle of all that, Doge Tipbot did come up and and started rising, but. Um, there, well, there, Dogecoin was alive in November of 2013, but the Doge tip bot actually came out um, right in at the same time that I got started. Um, I remember it getting a lot of attention. I thought it was neat. Um, I loved the, the great ability that they had to pull a community together. Um, they also made it fun. So, so I was well underway in building before Doge tip bot was on the scene. I was based on. Um, well, the Bitcoin tip bot, is, that's where my inspiration came from. When I saw it, I said, this is awesome, uh, but we need it for the whole internet, not just uh, a system that works through the Reddit messaging system. Can you take our, our audience, for those that haven't used Change before, what's the process for setting it up? Um, is it, a, you know, is it a, a detailed process in order to start tipping? Go through the actual process that, that a user would go through. Right. So. Usually, there's there's two main entry paths. I'll talk about them both at the same time, or one right after the other. Uh, the the usual way that people get excited about tipping or get into tipping is they get a tip from somebody else, and in that case, they've received some sort of message. Let's take Twitter as an example. They've received a tweet that says, uh, "This person just sent you a beer over Twitter, uh, and we'll respond with a link to collect." When you click on that link, you'll log in with that social networking account. And that's how we know it's you rather than uh, an anonymous person clicking on that tip. You, you log in with Twitter, and then any tips that we're pending for you are credited to your account. Um, so we, we make it as simple as just logging in with the other social networking account. Um, uh, a certain percentage of our users come to the site by seeing someone else getting tipped. So they'll either go to changetip.com or they'll click on that tip collection link themselves. Um, but the process is the same. They can just choose whatever social networking account they want to to log in with. And what, what platforms do you support right now? It's changing pretty rapidly. Um, one of the things that we did in at the end of last December was actually build a bot API so that people can write their own bots against our platform. Um, so there's four or five, I think, under active development by the community now. But the ones that we internally and officially support are Reddit, Twitter, GitHub, uh, YouTube, Google+, Tumblr, 
stock twits, and Slack. Um, a hip chat one is coming very soon. And then um, a little bit of inside information for you guys. SoundCloud uh, is, is right behind it. And Twitch is right behind it after that. So within the next 30 days, the, those, those three one, new ones will be live. Now, in your system, is it possible for the bots to be shut down by the, the network? For example, with Reddit, um, the bot there, is it possible if something would happen like Reddit could decide to shut the bot down? Yes. So we're using the publicly available APIs in order to uh, access this information. Um, on one hand, you know, we don't necessarily ask their permission ahead of time. We just use their APIs. Um, uh, in some cases, we, we've had, you know, they know we exist, and, and we, I wouldn't say we have their blessing, um, but, we, but they're fine with us using it. Um, uh, and in fact, uh, they're excited about it because it's showcasing a novel use of their platform. It's driving engagement for their users, and it's, um, uh, in some cases, increasing the quality of the content. Um, you know, one of the examples that I can't wait to implement is, say, Quora. Uh, when Quora starts to see that people will spend an extra eight or ten hours or however much time trying to provide a high quality answer because they know that the that by being the best answer for that question for a number of years they may receive a few hundred dollars worth of tips over the life of that question so we're actually going to start to see publishers use us not only for uh, uh, other revenue possibilities but um, uh, higher quality ca and content and better engagement. Now, now actually, l let me answer the question from a more negative stance. Um, I think th th where this goes is, well, wait a minute, Nick. W once people start to see a lot of tips flowing through their platform, aren't they going to shut you off and then build that solution internal? Uh, and, 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 and this was a question we asked ourselves in the early days of Change Tip. And where we netted out on it was, for the kinds of companies that would decide to build their own ad server, um, you know, the world dominators, right? So Google, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, Yahoo, maybe Twitter. Somebody who, who is large enough to say, well, we want to own this whole piece and we want to own the financial relationship with our customer, th they may decide to come out with their own tipping solution. In fact, it wouldn't be surprised me. If I have to make a prediction, I think YouTube would probably be the first place where we're kicked off of because Google is smart enough to know that that, that content is valuable and may decide um, that they want to own the relationship with something like Google Wallet. Um, but for, for the other 99% of content publishers and creators, uh, they're not going to want to own the financial relationship and the, and, the, and the financial liability, quite frankly, for, for their customers. It's also not a better end user experience. So I'm, I'm not going to want a tipping wallet for YouTube and a tipping wallet for, for all the other sites. Um, I want instead to show up and say, oh, cool, Change Tip works here too, um, and just be able to use one tipping wallet for all of my tipping needs uh, on online. I also hope that when YouTube does, or you know, when the first site does decide to shut us off, uh, that uh, we, we can negotiate with them and have a, a meaningful discussion about how to get it on there in the right way. Um, and um, if that doesn't go well, I have a feeling that as ravenous and and and, and as excited as our community is there'll be a bit of a backlash. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the Million Man March uh, at eBay when they decided to raise fees, but you know, hopefully the, the community would support us enough to, to, to be overwhelmingly convincing to, to have Change Tip reinstituted if somebody ever decides to shut us off. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there's quite a lot to discuss here. One of the things you mentioned earlier uh, was about these micropayments and giving content, or rather paying content creators directly. Your site, though, of course, is called Change Tip, but that misses, well, it's a tipping component, but it's missing like a huge portion of, I guess, like your market or who would benefit from your service, namely, you know, anybody who writes articles or produces, develops good code, and they'd be able to like perhaps implement your system and receive the funds, I guess, directly for good work. Isn't that, is that one of the main functions that you're focusing on, or, or, any, or is that any like in the future development plans to push that further? So yeah, well, the, the bigger idea behind the company is to build a micropayment infrastructure for the web. We've talked about micropayments for a long time. Uh, going back to the late 90s, there's a now defunct W3C 
standard for embedding a extra HTML tags to allow for micropayments within web pages, for example. Um, obviously didn't work then. Um, we didn't have Bitcoin. Uh, and I think going further, not, not only did it, we not have Bitcoin to enable micropayments, but more specifically with products like ChangeTip, it's the marriage of Bitcoin and social media that's going to finally bring micropayments to, to life. So, and then the first spoke off of that micropayment hub that I think most people wrap their head well around is this idea of re reinventing uh, content monetization. I don't know why we've lazily accepted that ads are the right way to monetize content, um, but uh, you know, because generally end users don't like ads, generally publishers and content creators don't like ads, uh, but they're just the most effective channel for that revenue to, to take place. But I'd much rather, uh, picking on YouTube again, um, I'd much rather skip every YouTube pre-roll video ever by just saying, Google, I'll give you a penny to not have to watch this because my time's more valuable. And I know that's 10 or 100 times more than YouTube is making by forcing me to watch that pre-roll ad. So um, I'd also, in addition to just replacing ads by saying charging a tenth of a penny per page view, um, I, I'd also love to 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 reinvent the concept of freemium content for site creators that I support. So, uh, you know, podcast creators, bloggers, uh, people that I have a little bit more of a relationship with, and I think they're doing great work. Not only do I just uh, not want to see ads, but it's like, oh, here, that was that was a particularly good article. Here's here's a beer. Here's a coffee. Um, uh, so. Uh, I think the other thing you brought up there is the name. Um, change tip, uh, you know, I, I've fallen in love with it for, for, for several reasons. Um, uh, I know that what we're ultimately trying to communicate is gratitude and appreciation. Um, I'll also recognize tip isn't uh, very safe when it goes to other parts of the world. And so that's one of the things that we're, we're thinking about. Uh, the name of the company is actually Change Coin. Um, so, uh, you know, it's got the, the right wording for broader uses when we expand beyond just tipping and into micropayments more broadly. So, <clears throat> I think it was just announced, I don't know, it was yesterday the day before that, that Coinbase is now, I guess, halting their, their tipping service. I think it was, it's been announced that they were doing it maybe because of the, the, the lead or just because of, of change tip itself. Is that what you've heard? Yeah, so in my conversations with uh, Coinbase, they recognize the importance of having a good working relationship with me and the strain that it's put on our relationship to have us built as a partner and potentially a competitor. So I think they're taking a real positive step forward here in that they're trying to draw a stronger line between the people that they're working with and the people that they're uh, competing with. And um, so I applaud their decision. Um, I'm excited about this is a much better step forward. I'm in a much happier place with Coinbase today than I was uh, last week. And we're, um, we're actually actively exploring now some better integrations with them. Uh, for example, uh, launched just yesterday, you can now log in with your Coinbase account um, at just as you could with Twitter or Facebook or Reddit. Um, that in and of itself doesn't provide a lot of functionality for end users uh, because you can't tip on Coinbase. Um, but what it does do, we have an anonymous one-time tip URL that you can use where you can just send somebody a URL that has a short code in it that, that allows you to unlock a tip. Um, and, and if you, for whatever reason, didn't want to log in to change tip with your social networking accounts, you could just log in with your Coinbase account and withdraw it directly. Um, we may be exploring some other easier wallet top-up features uh, as well with Coinbase. So I feel much better about doing all of those now uh, that, that, that Coinbase has exited and sunsetted their, their tipping products. So um, I think it was a great decision on their part, um, and I applaud they're moving forward into a, a more collaborative approach with the community. Did did you see that as a like an issue? Like what 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 was the concerns about change tips? Uh, sorry, about Coinbase's tipping system. Um, you know, yeah, it was definitely an issue for us because at at a certain point, 
um, someone's having to make a decision between whether or not they're going to use the, the change tip uh, tipping button. Well, and, and maybe this wasn't clear. We, we came out with a tipping button um, mid last year, and we already had one on the market. And then Coinbase came out with their own similar tipping button um, that admittedly was actually a better user experience because we put ours out as kind of an alpha experiment to, to, to try it out. And then they came out with a good one. Um, and then we came out with a much better one that was the real release and not just an alpha release. And, um, and so, yeah, uh, I think there were people that were having to decide between which tip button that they were going to put on their site for bloggers and, and content creators. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's weird. It was, it, was, it was odd to be in a position where Coinbase is uh, powering some of the functionality of our site, and we've had discussions on that on, on one front. And then simultaneously, it appeared that they were building competitive products. So um, I'm I'm glad that tension is is gone, and and I think this was a smart move on Coinbase's part to to realize that the value of the relationship with us was more important than um, whatever traction they were having with their tip button. So I guess I was missing the point that you guys actually did have some type of partnership, or you were actually working together previously. And then they did it. Okay, that makes more sense to me now, rather than just being competition-wise. Um, okay. And on the uh, another announcement you just released, uh, I guess like two days ago, is this function for redirecting, I guess, tips to charity. What was the motivation behind doing that? Yeah, I'm super excited about this. So, and and th another one of the spokes off of that micropayment infrastructure for the web that that we're excited to enable is fundraising, charities, causes, donations. So so much so that the, this is the social mission for Change Tip in 2015, and it's kind of my passion project. And Victoria Van Eyck, who runs Community, she's also extremely passionate about this, and she's running forward with it. Um, so this is kind of what we work on nights and weekends because we want to see it happen. And, and um, we've seen one interesting example uh, back in Haiti uh, when the earthquake hit in, I think it was 2008, uh, Google uh, employees got together and put together an SMS short code that would allow you to send uh, small amounts of money by SMSing a five-digit code to someone. Uh, it just automatically came out of your cell phone bill. That was a real interesting example of lowering friction on payments. Then we also saw the Ice Bucket Challenge where we saw uh, the virality and the power of social media to advance a cause. Um, now what, what if we would have had a way to say donate a dollar by sending a tweet. Uh, you get the three elements put together, or actually, so the third element I think is people want to brag about being associated with the cause. You know, you you see people wearing the little pink ribbons, or uh, you know, they want to put on Facebook, "Look, I'm a good person. I'm supporting this cause." So I think bringing the the trifecta of low friction payments, the virality of social media, and the the braggability of of contributing to a good cause, um, we're we're going to have some great stunt campaigns uh, for raising money for people uh, here in 2015. Um, uh, and I think this is great brand association for Bitcoin as well. Um, let's stop talking about Silk Road and, uh, and Mt. Gox and some of the challenges that Bitcoin has, but actually showcase and highlight some positive use cases for Bitcoin that get people excited and show the, the power of micropayments when you start sending one or two cents or small amounts of money around, but the cumulative power of doing that across the globe is actually going to add up to a meaningful amount of money. We, uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned earlier about the W3C payments protocol, and that hasn't been implemented at the moment, but from our understanding, uh, this has been revived. There's going to be some work going forward for the web, and there will be a payment protocol at some time in the nearish future. Are you uh, involved in that project at all? I'm not, I, I didn't know about that, and, and to be clear, there was, I'm wondering, I'm just trying to make sure that we're talking about the same thing, because there was a W3C micropayment spec, and then is this, is this the same thing, then, that you're talking about? Because it was very specifically a micropayment spec for, an, for including extra HTML tags into HTML5 to, to make it so that you could charge by the hour for, say, viewing the New York Times. Mm. Probably something that, you know what, yeah, I don't think we have any more information, might be different weeks, something we can definitely look into. We'll look into yeah. So, yeah. But if, if you have, I'd be, of course, excited about uh, doing what I could to inform and support that. So love to hear more information. I, I wasn't aware of anything that was being revived. 
So you recently raised uh, three and a half million dollars in funding. Uh, what do you plan on doing with that money, and, and what do you have in the in the development pipeline down the road? Yeah, good question. So um, uh, wound up actually a little closer to four million. It was a classic case when you announce that the the, the raise is three point five, then everybody suddenly gets excited and, and wants to jump on on board. So we wound up uh, right at about four million. Uh, the uh, operational plan is to uh, it was to double the team. We've recently gone from four full-time people uh, at the end of last October, and we just hired our tenth full-time person. So gr growing the team. Um, uh, first uh, half of the year is centered around a lot uh, m more infrastructure for public consumption. So um, APIs. Uh, we, we released early versions of the APIs that allow people to create bots. Um, we're about to enable, we're about to build an API that will allow people to log in with their change tip account um, on other services. So making it easy for build for other people to build services on top of our platform um, is a big push. Um, uh, I think I, I think it's safe to talk about some of the rest of these, um, but well, more more broadly. Um, we have that flywheel that I mentioned earlier where there's uh, tipping begets tipping and it's spinning. We're growing at least at 30% month over month every month. Um, we've had a few triple digit months and our job with this next round of money is to get that flywheel spinning as fast as possible. So making it easier to collect, making it easier to deposit, um, building tools for our power tippers that get them even more excited. Um, just lubricate, accelerate, and optimize that flywheel and get it spinning as fast as we can so that we can get as many users as we can and as many new people in the Bitcoin. What is the, uh, you know, and I personally, what is the monetization strategy for change tip down the road? Yeah, so what, what's on the website is that we're going to charge 1% for uh, withdrawing tips. Um, uh, we keep crossing that out and postponing it. We don't want to do anything right now that's going to inhibit the growth of users, so um, uh, that's why we keep crossing that off. Um, you know, the bigger vision here of the micropayment infrastructure for the web, when you become the easiest way for people to move money around over social media and user-generated content sites, there's lots of different interesting touch points for uh, how we'll be able to monetize um, um, so we, we, we've, I know it's not real popular anymore to say, well, we'll worry about that later. Um, but this is a case where um, the the the, uh, the the monetization strategies are just so obvious with with us, the board, and all of our investors that we just say, okay, yes, checkbox. Um, all you need to focus on right now, Nick, is uh, lots of users and lots of wallets. So. You know that that you're monetized, that you're focusing now on user growth right now. I mean, a lot of people might think that that now you're mining the data and that's going to be used to giving out to third parties. Is that your intentions? No, definitely not. So uh, we, you know, and I know the the, the phrase: if if you don't uh, know that you're the product, you are the product, or if you don't see the product, you are the product. Um, uh, Facebook has has definitely paved some interesting roads when it comes to being uh, naughty with user data. Uh, as, a, as my background, I think it's really important to talk about this. I'm a privacy zealot and a privacy advocate. I've attended Wall Street Journal privacy hackathons because they recognize me as an expert in the privacy space. Um, I've implemented tools for end users and publishers to know how their data was being splayed all over the internet uh, with uh, identifying bad actors that were uh, we're, we're dropping pixels against the, the, the policies. Um, I informed the do not track spec um, and I implemented and championed its implementation at two different companies. Um, I, 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 so for me to be accused of privacy data just or, or, or implications hurts a little because it's not a part of who I am. Um, so saying it out loud, we will never sell user data without their explicit permission. Um, there's no good reason to, to, to do that when we have such other great monetization uh, ideas within the core platform. It's do you ever see a time, I'm not sure what your ultimate end game is, where that decision might not be up to you? Mm, no, that's a good question. So. Uh, uh, you know, some people have said, well, wait, you could just change your privacy policy later and, and do it. Um, 
I don't know how to provide any more assurances other than, well, you know, no, we have absolutely no intentions of selling user data. I'm trying to be as public as possible about that. Uh, and we want to be good, good citizens of this. Um, where I think it ultimately boils down to is, is end user choice. So there's also with micropayments an entirely new idea that, that could surface. And this isn't about, this is nowhere in our wheelhouse and we're not thinking about it this way, but um, uh, instead of my data being illegitimately scraped when I visit different sites, um, what if I could choose to get paid for having my data be available uh, by saying every time you visit a web page, if you'll agree to share this information about you through the browser, uh, you'll get a better experience and you get to earn a, a penny per page view. Um, and of course, if you don't want to do it, you, you opt out. I, I, I could see a world where something like that takes place under the right user controls and under the right uh, way of handling it, but it's not, that, that's not anywhere in ChangeCoin or ChangeTips wheelhouse. That's not how we think about the world. Um, but I do think their micropayments could be a, a right forward-looking uh, way at looking at data monetization that puts the end users in control of their own data and explicitly gives them the option to, to opt out. Seems to be a strategy from a lot of other companies, wallet companies, different things. So yeah, it seems to be a prominent Bitcoin space about getting users. Uh, Ethan, you got anything else for Skype? Nick, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, it is you, you guys are garnishing a, lot, garnishing a lot of buzz right now. I just want to see you keep implementing it on other, other platforms and I'm excited to see what you're doing in 2015. Thanks for joining us today. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy económico. Uh, at the moment, the price of Bitcoin is very cheap. Pero casi todo el mundo tiene muy poco dinero para invertir. But almost everybody has a very little money to invest. Debería decir que esta idea me vino hoy especialmente cuando vi otra vez una chica ahí pidiendo dinero por la calle. Actually, I must say first this idea today I got especially when I saw again um, one girl begging for money in the streets. Me gustaría ayudar, pero yo tampoco me sobra mucho el dinero. I would really like to help everybody, but I, I don't have either too much money. And así que me vino la siguiente idea. So I got the following idea. It's, uh, it's más bien un juego. Uh, it's uh, rather a game. Um, lo que es muy importante elegir un monedero de Bitcoin que solo tú mismo misma, tienes la llave privada. What is very important uh, to choose um, Bitcoin wallet a company which you only possess the private key. For example, uh, blockchain.info. Por ejemplo, la empresa blockchain.info. Luego imprimir en papel um, la llave privada y también guardarlo tú mismo. Then to print in paper the private key and uh, of course save for, for yourself that private key. Bueno, ya estamos imprimiendo, imprime por lo menos 10. So now we are already printing, so at least print 10 directions, 10 direcciones. Luego pones algo de Bitcoin, una cantidad, lo que, lo que te da la gana. 
en esta dirección. Then you put some Bitcoin, uh, the amount, whatever you want, and that in these directions. Y la próxima vez que sales de casa ya tienes algo que dar a los que están ahí pidiendo por la calle. And the next time you go out of the house, you have already something to give for these people who are begging on the streets. Y por ejemplo, y claro, para tus amigos, amigas, and for your friends, of course. Eso da motivación a la gente para aprender Bitcoin y this gives motivation for the people to learn about Bitcoin. Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cl clave privada, que es la clave secreta. You explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and uh, me. And uh, explicas, esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First, I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later, explain. Después, lo expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these four years. So you lose this. That's the, this part of the game. Es la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpsons la gente tiene cuatro dedos. Y Solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, first, I thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in The Simpsons, people have four fingers and only God has five fingers. Uh, I'll show some pictures. Voy a enseñar algunos imágenes de los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en también cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde, Puede ser de gran ayuda. Even if you just put a little small amount later, it can be a big help. 
eh, no solo para, bueno, es un juego. <ríe> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años, para, es para esta persona, si no, es para ti, si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada. So, uh, it's, this is the game part, if uh, the, the person takes the money out, it's for that person, but if they forget it after these four years, you can take it out, and it can be really... <laughs> bueno, imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada, y si por ejemplo, okay, first translate. Print and not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si, por ejemplo, explicas a la gente. Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar un Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some Bitcoin and, you, and this person doesn't have, have any, so you have already this public address where they can send you Bitcoin. ¿Qué es Bitcoin? Bitcoin es la primera moneda digital descentralizada. Los Bitcoins son monedas digitales que puedes enviar a través de Internet. Comparado con otras alternativas, Bitcoin tiene numerosas ventajas. Los Bitcoins son transferidos directamente de persona a persona a través de la red sin pasar por un banco u otro intermediario. Esto significa que las comisiones son mucho menores, puedes usarlo en cualquier país, tu cuenta no puede ser congelada y no hay prerequisitos o límites arbitrarios. Miremos cómo funciona. Los bitcoins son generados en todo internet por cualquiera con un programa gratuito llamado Minero de Bitcoin. Crear bitcoins requiere una cierta cantidad de trabajo para cada bloque de monedas. Esta cantidad se ajusta automáticamente por la red, para que los bitcoins siempre sean creados a un ratio predecible y limitado. Tus bitcoins se guardan en tu billetera digital, que te resultará familiar si usas banca digital. Cuando transfieres bitcoins, una firma electrónica es añadida. Pasados unos minutos, la transacción es verificada por el minero y es almacenada permanente y anónimamente por la red. El software de Bitcoin es completamente abierto y cualquiera puede revisar el código. Bitcoin está cambiando las finanzas de la misma manera que la web ha cambiado el periodismo. Cuando cualquiera tiene acceso al mercado global, florecen grandes ideas. Miremos algunos ejemplos de cómo los Bitcoins están usándose hoy en día. Puedes comprar videojuegos, regalos, libros, servidores y calcetines de alpaca. Existen varias casas de cambio donde puedes intercambiar tus bitcoins por dólares, euros y más. Los bitcoins son una gran forma para que pequeños negocios y autónomos reciban publicidad. No cuesta nada empezar a aceptarlos, no hay cargos o comisiones y recibirás negocio adicional de la economía bitcoin. Para tus primeros bitcoins y más información visita weusecoins.com Bueno, ahora voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de los dedos de Simpsons. Now I'll show you some pictures of the fingers of Simpson. The four fingers, los cuatro dedos y cinco dedos de Dios. The four fingers and five fingers of God of Simpsons.
13th of March. Right now, there are more people on the internet than there were on the planet in 1960. We're raising money. And it's easier to be discovered than ever before. It takes a full team to make each one of our videos. But the internet needs better software to help us reward one another for our work. Advertisers value you differently. They say that 1,000 of you is only worth $6. Any help is very much appreciated. Please fund this project. We need your help. Apparently and historic. Oppose the secret society, the secret oath, and the secret proceedings. We decided long ago the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment. A pertinent fact far outweighs the dangers which are cited to justify it. Face the facts, join our hands, make a stand. Uh -huh. It's time to gather plans, get the shot, take the chance. Till there is no one left, stay correct to the death. They can't ever break a freedom, we will never let it. The corrupt politics is killing the system. Cynicism is it, and it's everything that you witness. They tell you what to think, make you believe that they're the realness. They feed us full of lies, and yet we always forgive them. Huh? It's all conspiracy, and if you feed it in a witch, you're the puppet. The government's pulling strings from above you. It's time for the introduction to truth, and let's start a movement. We've all been brainwashed, they believe that we all are stupid. We believe in what we see, and whatever our ears are hearing. But if you look close, listen, gather your own opinion, you'll understand all the lies, lines, and what's between them. This world is not your oyster, this world is a fucking prison. Come on! happening in our nation. The world will stand up for the fear of assassination. So they strip us of everything. We stand there and just take it. I'm scared to make a stand a false flag operation. Research Illuminati. Find out by 9-11. You see they line their pockets. Don't believe the lies they tell you. Find to seek the truth. Realize we need to do whatever it is we can to protect our livelihood. It's time for us to do when the conspiracy or not. They owe some explanations to the questions that we got. What are the skull and bones? What is lying beneath? Secretive me got you lying between your teeth. What's with the Bilderberg? I'm burning your effigies. I'm praying a Lucifer. How sickening this can you be? While all of the time praying, you believing in the beast just to keep up appearances within Christianity. Come on. Try to shut us down or 
turn around, let us storm them. We got the warnings, let us march from the morning through the night. We gon' fight and close the eye and hope and throw all these damn secret societies. Why we gotta stand for the new world proprieties? The evidence is clear, we're naive to the lies. Illuminati wolves killing sheep in the night. When will we learn? When will we see?